Custom mechanical keyboards have become a recent obsession of mine. As someone who appreciates good design, likes to build things, and has a passion for continuous improvement, this hobby is perfect for indulging my tinkering tendencies. Hello, I'm Matthew Encina. In this video, I'll give you a tour of my keyboard collection and share some of my experiences diving into the mechanical keyboard hobby. Before we begin, I want to thank Capital One Shopping for sponsoring a portion of this video. More on that later. While there are plenty of off-the-shelf keyboards that do the job, I've found that the experience of building, personalizing, and typing on a custom mechanical keyboard is unparalleled. For me, the most enjoyable part about the hobby is the endless options of customization that affect the look, feel, and sound of each build. Everyone has their own preference for what they look for in a mechanical keyboard. In general, I prefer minimal design aesthetics with subtle flair. I like heavy tactility when it comes to feedback and enjoy deep and loud sounds. That being said, my tastes are always evolving as my fascination and appreciation grow for this hobby. Though I'm still new to the scene and have much to learn, the goal of this video is to help you explore what's out there through my collection and share my experience so far. If you're just getting started, I've left some links in the description to help you navigate your first build, as well as full details of the keyboards I'll be sharing today. Let's start at the beginning. The Keychron Q2 was my entryway into custom mechanical keyboards. It's a 65% aluminum body, hot swap keyboard that comes fully built or as a bare bones kit. It's easily accessible in terms of cost and availability, and it's fully customizable. I spent weeks tinkering with it, trying out different switches, plates, keycaps, and mods to explore the different feel and sounds I might be able to get out of a keyboard. If you're looking to get started but aren't sure of where exactly to begin, I can highly recommend anything in the Keychron Q series which they are continually improving and expanding on. Here's a sound test of the current state of my Q2 keyboard. Even if you've only spent a short amount of time in this hobby, you've probably already heard of Ramaworks, a keyboard design studio out of Melbourne, Australia. Their signature line of keyboards has an iconic tall profile and bold yet minimal characteristics. It's undeniably beautiful, the very thing that drew me in. My M65B is a 65% keyboard in the milk colorway finished off with GMK minimal keycaps. Outside of the aesthetic, I really enjoy the feel and sound of this board. Speaking of joy, the Norbauer Heavy 6 is a 65% custom keyboard housing designed around the classic Leopold FC-660C. I first learned about this keyboard when I watched an interview with its creator, Ryan Norbauer, an industrial designer out of Silicon Valley. His approach to design is rooted in retro tech, done in a modern way. I connected with this approach and wanted to own a piece of his work, so I went on the hunt. After searching for weeks on Reddit, I found a post from another keyboard content creator, Maker Mods, who turned out to be local. I met him in person to buy it from him. Knowing I was new to the scene, he graciously showed up with a few other keyboards from his own collection so I can experience other options. It was like our own mini keyboard meetup with two people in a fast food parking lot. The community is so awesome. This particular Heavy 6 keyboard has been modded and is quite unique. Unlike the standard MX switch, this uses Topra switches, which are known for their heavy tactility. These switches have their sliders swapped out with Novatouch MX sliders to make them compatible with the keycaps I own. I also swapped out the controller board so I can custom program the keys, which was a lot more challenging to learn than I thought. This keyboard took a bit of work, but was worth it because of its unique aesthetic, feel, and especially sound.
While the Heavy 6 comes in around 4 pounds, it's not the heaviest one I own. The GHS RAR keyboard weighs in at almost 10 pounds when fully assembled. It's a seamless 75% keyboard designed by Gone Hacking Studios out of Perth, Australia. This keyboard is inspired by the retro Cherry G80 1800 keyboard. As you can tell by now, I have a soft spot for designs that borrow features from timeless classics while respectfully modernizing it. What drew me in is this recognizable angled bevel and the beautiful mirrored back. This is the first keyboard I had to do soldering on, but instead of soldering the keyboard switches directly into the PCB, I ended up installing these Milmax sockets to convert this into a hot swap board, so I can continue to test out different switches in the future without having to desolder it. Here's how the final build turned out. As more designers enter the space, the more interesting concepts come out of it. The Zenith by Ion Keyboards is a 65% with a striking layout featuring a 10-key macro pad on the left side. What attracted me to this keyboard is its ultra-wide proportions and unconventional style. It has a heavy black brass weight at the bottom, which adds a compelling material contrast against the aluminum case. I bought this from another local community member who threw in a set of Holy Panda switches for me to try, which are known for their sharp and heavy tactile feel. This combined with the brass plate results in an unapologetic, loud and clacky sound. Before we continue, I want to thank Capital One Shopping for sponsoring this portion of the video. One thing I've learned about the mechanical keyboard hobby is it's not cheap. So I always try to find ways I can save some money whenever I can. Capital One Shopping is a browser extension that automatically finds the best available deal and coupon codes whenever you're shopping online. In my search for various keyboard parts, the Capital One Shopping tool found me a few deals which save me money that add up in the long run. If you shop on Amazon, it'll compare prices to other popular retailers and will make you aware if there's a better price elsewhere, giving you peace of mind that you're buying at the best deal available. One click is all it takes, and you don't have to be a Capital One card holder. Avoid paying full price, get Capital One shopping for free. Thanks again to Capital One Shopping for sponsoring this portion of the video. The second custom mechanical keyboard I bought after my Q2 was the Mode 65. Mode Designs is a keyboard maker that excels at minimal aesthetics and offers a wide range of customization. I went for the white aluminum body and this beautiful black mirror head plate which hides the case screws. This is one of my most comfortable keyboards to type on. It's currently configured in a stack mounting style that utilizes a silicone base and plate foam, which outputs a sound signature that's distinctly muted. Since my initial purchase, I've made friends with the team at Mode. Because I didn't own a TKL layout yet, Mode sent me their 80 keyboard to test out. Like the 65, it comes in several colorways and can be customized in many different configurations. At the time of this recording, they currently have these available for purchase, which I've left a link to in the description. Everything I've built so far has followed a monochrome look, but I'm thinking this subtle green might look good in my space. What do you think? Another keyboard with well thought out features is the Bauer 2 a 65% black and brass keyboard designed by Omnitype. The creator of this keyboard, Garrett Moore, 
He's a graphic designer turned keyboard entrepreneur. I share a similar background, so I connected with his story because I know he's someone who cares about the details. From the design of the products, the packaging, down to the typography on everything. Even though I prefer tactile switches, Garrett the designer insists that linear switches are better for this board. So I installed Gateron Box Ink switches to these, which are known for their deep sound and smooth performance. These switches were lubed and filmed for me by Custom Keyboard Co., a Los Angeles vendor that I go to for all of my lube services. Here's how the Bauer 2 sounds. All of my keyboards are made of metal and plastic, except for this one. This is a custom design built out of my favorite hardwood, white oak. When I first discovered that there were makers out there that created wood cases, it piqued my interest. After some research, I found someone that could help me bring my idea to life. I connected with MK Milling and gave him details on what I was looking to build. I sent him a list of design features based on other keyboards I liked a 19 millimeter front height, a 5.5 degree typing angle, arrow key blocker, slightly larger forehead and front lip bezels, and an overhang for a distinct silhouette. We designed this around the widely available KBD67 PCB with Bluetooth, which is a 65% layout with wireless capabilities. After a few iterations, we landed on something I was happy with, so Mitchell of MK Milling went to work. For the next few weeks, he cut down the wood, used the CNC machine to etch out the details, including a cavity to host the battery that would power the Bluetooth PCB. Then he sanded it down and applied my favorite wood finish, Osmo Poly Oil. In about a month's time, I received the finished case and began building it. I was about two thirds of the way through it when I ran into a problem. There was a JST connector on the PCB that we didn't account for in the design and was getting in the way when trying to close the case. My excitement turned into frustration, but Mitchell was gracious enough to help me fix the problem. I sent the base back to him and he chiseled out an extra cavity to allow for clearance. When you create anything new, there will always be challenges to work through. It's part of the process. Having gone through that, I now have a deeper appreciation for this keyboard and for keyboard designers in general. And now I have a beautiful wood keyboard that perfectly complements my office. If you're interested in building your first keyboard, or want more details about my collection, I've left links to resources in the description. If you have questions, ask and I'll do my best to answer it. With that out of the way, it's time to get back to work.